bit of Eurovision at the uh, top of this hour, and now I want to uh, take you to what you could call the anti-Eurovision. That's right. In response to the song competition's controversial setting of Israel this year, pro-Palestinian activists held a counter-performance dubbed Global Vision that was streamed from cities across the world. performers, British Iraqi rapper Loki, joining me now from London. Um, sir, why? Hi, Becky. How are you doing? Firstly, we um, actually were streaming to 35,000 people worldwide. Now, that's more mm. than uh, the tickets that were actually sold for the Eurovision. And in the words of the head of the Israeli Broadcasting Services, Israel has been the first country in 64-year history of the Eurovision that was not able to fund it itself. It relied on the broadcasting services to do it. We know that there was not a spike in tourism, and we know that also the Eurovision village itself was on the remains of El Menshia, um, a Palestinian village of Yaffa that was deleted from existence in the Nakba of 1948. So we saw that Israel is in a situation where it violates more UN resolutions and more international law than any other country, but yet seems sanction proof. So for that reason, upon inspiration from the BDS campaign in South Africa, upon the advice of former US President Jimmy Carter, who defines Israel as an apartheid state, of uh, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, right. Nobel Peace Prize winner, yep. uh, the boycott and divestment sanctions is a sound, non-violent form of resistance. Mm. No. Loki, your job was sort of done for you by Madonna, was it not, last night, and by uh, the uh, the uh, band representing Iceland. I mean, Eurovision say this isn't about politics, but it was last night. Well, we would have prefer preferred that uh, Madonna didn't cross the picket line, but in fact, the fact that she had to have a Palestinian flag on stage is a testament to the success of our campaign and also is a testament to the fact that Israel cannot leave um, 12.5 million people worldwide, which is the Palestinian worldwide population, in a state of hauntology, in a state of constant anticipation for more just futures. Also the fact that the Icelandic team um, felt the need to show the Palestinian flag as well. Again, we would have preferred they did not cross the picket line um, and these aesthetic gestures um, are limited, but at the same time, I would say they bear testament to our success. Let's talk about the politics uh, for uh, the region. Um, we are promised the details of a peace plan from the US president's uh, son-in-law, Jared Kushner. We don't have the details as of yet. Um, there are those who say uh, this plan will simply uh, maneuver out the Palestinians effectively and that the many countries from, from the region that we are in, uh, in an access with the US and Israel, are sort of forging ahead at whatever, leaving the Palestinians behind. What's your sense? Well, um, paragraph 6, article 49 of uh, the Geneva Conventions um, outlaws the moving of citizens of an occupying power from inside that power to the state it occupies. Israel has built up across the peace process um, uh, illegal settlers in the West Bank that number almost 600,000 people. They have access to over 70% of the clean water in the West Bank. We have seen the peace process as a subterfuge for the continued colonization of Palestinian land and ethnic cleansing of Palestinian people from their homeland. Um, if you look at the law even within Israel, yes, there are 1.5 million Palestinians who have Israeli citizenship that have the right to participate in elections, as do, I might remind you, the illegal settlers in the West Bank, by the way. However, those people, those Palestinians within Israel, what they have is Israeli citizenship. They don't have nationality. Their nationality sure. is defined as Arab. There is a Jewish nationality, yeah. there is a Russian nationality, there is a Syrian nationality. Legal rights group Adala have identified over 50 laws within Israel that enshrine inequality between Jews and Arabs. Now, yeah. Ehud Barak said it um, clearly, Israel can either be non-democratic or it can be, um, uh, it's either racism or democracy. 
and, and that's a clear choice for us. It's not a difference between Jews okay. and Palestinians. It's a difference between those that believe in the equality of all and those that believe in the supremacy of some. Loki, thank you. Um, thank you very much. Your uh, live streams, hi for Bethlehem, Dublin, as well as London last night. Your view okay. will be considered by some extremely controversial. They are your views. Good to have no, you on the show. I, I disagree. Thank you. Thanks. Well, there's a lot going on this hour.